Here we're gonna look at a nice viewer suggested integral known as the glacier integral. So it looks like this. We've got the integral from zero to one of arctan of three plus three x over one minus two x minus x squared all over one plus x squared. So looking at this, it seems like, well, where would you even start this? But it turns out that this problem ends up in a lot of textbooks, including the classic Edwards calculus textbook, and they give you a substitution to use. And that makes me really believe that probably the substitution came first and the integral was constructed out of the substitution. So maybe post in the comments if you know the history of any of these like crazy integrals and which came first, the tricks or the integrals. Okay, so that being said, that means we're going to need a substitution in order to solve this, and it's going to kind of be a tricky substitution. So let's maybe get that on the board right now. So we've got our substitution on the board, along with three facts which will help us convert our x integral into a t integral. I'm going to use t as my substituting variable. So our substitution is x equals 1 minus t over 1 plus t. And first we're gonna calculate dx, and we're gonna do that by taking the derivative here. Okay, so let's maybe do that first. So we know that dx will be equal to dx dt dt, and then that's gonna be the derivative with respect to t of our substituting formula, one minus t over one plus t dt. Now you could maybe use the quotient rule in order to take that derivative, but I would like to maybe use a trick and rewrite this as the derivative with respect to t of 2 minus 1 plus t over 1 plus t dt. I think that's going to make it a little bit simpler because we can break this fraction apart and after breaking that fraction apart, we'll have the derivative with respect to t of 2 over 1 plus t minus the number 1. But now the derivative of a constant is 0, so that means the derivative of this 1 is equal to 0. And then we can think about this 2 over 1 plus t as 2 times 1 plus t to the minus 1. And then using the power rule, that'll give us minus 2 over 1 plus t squared. And then I should have a dt here. So that establishes our first formula. And now we're ready to move on to our next part of our substitution, which is this x squared plus 1 term. So let's maybe see how this goes. So this will be equal to 1 minus t over 1 plus t quantity squared plus 1. So I'm going to give that a common denominator by replacing this plus 1 with 1 plus t over 1 plus t all squared. That means I can put those fractions together. So let's see what that leaves me with. So I've got a big fraction. My denominator is 1 plus t squared. And then in the numerator, I have 1 minus 2t plus t squared. And then plus 1 plus 2t plus t squared from squaring each of the, those binomials. But now we have some cancellation. So this 2t and this 2t cancels. And then the 1 plus t squared will double itself up because there are two copies of it, leaving us with 2 times 1 plus t squared over 1 plus t all squared. And now we've established this second formula. Now we're ready to look at our third calculation, which is this term that looks like 3 plus 3x over 1 minus 2x minus x squared. So we need to again do our su standard substitution that we've been doing, this 1 minus t over 1 plus t. So that's going to give us 3 plus 3 times 1 minus t over 1 plus t all over 1 minus 2, 1 minus t over 1 plus t minus 1 minus t over 1 plus t quantity squared like that. Okay, so now there's probably a lot of different ways to do this that are about the same difficulty, but what I would like to do is to maybe decrease the complexity of this fraction. So notice I've got a fraction in the numerator and in the denominator. So I can clear the denominators in both the numerator and the denominator by multiplying by 1 plus t 
squared over one plus t squared. So that'll just help out with the simplification. So let's see what that leaves us with. So in the numerator, we'll have three times one plus t squared plus three times one minus t times one plus t. So that's what happens when we cancel this one plus t in the denominator with one of those copies of one plus t that we've multiplied by. Okay, so now let's look downstairs. We'll have one plus t squared minus two times one minus t times one plus t, and then finally minus one minus t quantity squared. Okay, so now some of that stuff multiplies out pretty nicely, so let's notice that. So here, this is gonna multiply out to one plus two t, and then plus t squared, like that. This guy right here, is gonna to multiply to one minus t squared, like that. Okay, and then notice this guy down here multiplies to one plus two t plus t squared. Here we have this is one minus t squared, and then we have this is one minus two t plus t squared, like that. So let's see all of the simplification that happens. So check it out, in the numerator, we're gonna have a three plus three for the constant term. So that's gonna give us a six in the numerator. And then my t squared terms cancel and I have a three times a two t, so that's gonna be plus six t in the numerator. Okay, great. Now let's see what my constant terms are in the denominator. So I have a positive one here, I have a minus two here, and then I have a minus one there. So that's gonna go like all combine together to give me a minus two. Okay, so let's look at the t term. So notice I have a two t here, and then a negative, negative two t there. So those are gonna add up to four t. So now let's look at the t squared terms. So I've got a t squared term here, and then plus two of them there, and then minus one of them over there. So that's gonna give us a plus to t. But now by factoring a minus sign out of the numerator, but now we can factor a minus sign out of the denominator, put it in the numerator, factor a two out of both and cancel, and we'll be left with three plus three t with a minus sign upstairs. And then downstairs we'll have one minus 2t minus t squared, which is exactly the identity we were going for. Okay, now that we've got all of our substitutions under control, we're ready to finish it off. So let's see how we can do that. So like I said, I'm gonna make this substitution x equals one minus t over one plus t. Notice that when x is equal to zero, that's gonna make t equal to one. So that's pretty easy to check. When x is equal to one, that's gonna make t equal to zero. That's also pretty easy to check. So now we know what happens to the bounds of integration. So we can rewrite this as the integral from one to zero of the arctan of this object right here with the substitution that we've done below. So we've got minus three plus three t over one minus two t minus t squared. Great, now let's see what happens to all of the rest of it. So this one plus x squared term became this object right here. So we have two one plus t quantity squared over one plus t squared, like that. And then my dx component became this right here. So that's gonna be all times a minus two over one plus t quantity squared dt. So let's see all of the simplification that can happen here. So notice that this one plus t quantity squared can cancel with this one plus t quantity squared. This two can cancel with this two. And then finally, this minus sign can be changed to a plus if we change this from an integral from one to zero to an integral from zero to one. Then finally, we can use the fact that the inverse tangent is an odd function to bring this minus sign out to the front. 
So let's maybe do that as well. So we can take this minus sign out to the front again because that's because inverse tangent is an odd function. So let's see what that leaves us with. We've got minus the integral from zero to one of arctan three plus three t over one minus two t minus t squared over one plus t squared dt. But notice we've got our integral is equal to negative of itself with just a different dummy variable in there. So that means the value of our integral must be equal to zero because the only thing that's equal to negative of itself is zero. Okay, so now that we've got this answer, let's maybe clean this up and then we'll rewrite our solution in like a little bit more elegant of a way. Okay, so we got our solution as zero, and now we're gonna rewrite the solution using everything that we saw before in a way that I think is a little bit more elegant. So we're gonna take our integral and replace it with one half and then the integral plus itself. So that means I just need to copy this over. So I've got the integral from zero to one of arctan three plus three x over one minus two x minus x squared one plus x squared dx plus exactly the same thing. So I'll just copy that. So I didn't do anything fancy there. I just replaced the integral with one half of twice the integral. All right, nice. So next we're gonna do a substitution in each of these. So here we're gonna do the substitution x equals t so that's just really changing all the x's to t's. That's a trivial substitution. And then over here, we're gonna do this substitution. So x equals one minus t over one plus t. Now we're not gonna redo all of the calculation because that would be a little too much, but we will see that this gives us a one line solution. So notice here we have one half. Now this is the integral from zero to one of well, it's just this integral with t's instead of x's. And then from what we saw before in our previous calculation, we know that in that integral, essentially all that happens is that the t's change to x's and we pick up a minus sign. So we have minus the integral from zero to one of the same thing. But now let's see what we've got. Our goal integral has been expressed as one half an integral minus itself. So obviously this integral minus itself will be equal to zero. So that means we have our goal integral is one half times zero or zero. And that's a good place to stop.